Welcome back. This is lesson 116. Yeah, yeah, I know we're skipping. Yeah. You know, I'm just trying to fill in all the gaps that you're going to need to do well in eighth grade. All right. And frankly, a lot of the stuff in the seventh grade book, it's not that uh, well valuable. Let's put it that way. So I want to give you, before the end of this year is out, just the valuable stuff that I know you're going to need in 8th grade. And if you understand this stuff, this end of the year stuff, we can get off to a huge boost at the beginning of next year. Because I know what we've done and we can take the ball and just run with it. All right. So that's the point of skipping around here. All right. And today I want to talk about division by zero. Don't do it. All right? Dividing by zero is meaningless. We say that dividing by zero is undefined. I mean, pull out your calculator and do six divided by zero. See what it says. All right? If I do this on, on this calculator and I say six divided by zero equals, it says divide by zero error. All right? Yours might say domain error. All right, because remember, calculators can only handle real numbers. And the domain, acceptable answers for calculators are real numbers. Divide by zero gives us something that isn't even imaginary. It's just undefined. It's, it's worthless. It's meaningless. All right. It's an error. And as we get higher and higher into math, all right, the idea of avoiding division by zero becomes pretty important, all right? And so we have to learn how to avoid dividing by zero when we talk about rational expressions, all right? You will recall that a rational expression is, comes from the word ratio, something compared to something else using a fraction bar. Well, you got something on top and you got something on bottom. When you have a rational expression, the bottom cannot be zero. If it is, it messes up the whole thing. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, division by zero is the one flaw in our entire mathematical system. Everything else hangs together, except when you divide by zero, because that blows the whole thing. So we have to spend a whole lesson here on avoiding dividing by zero. And so rational expressions may have what are called excluded values. <coughs> some amount that you cannot have as a representative or a value for a variable, all right? Now, why is this, all right? Why is division by zero such a, a problem, all right? We got six divided by x. That's a rational expression, right? And it's a fraction, except we don't know what x is. However, we have to understand that x better not be zero because 6 divided by 0 is undefined. So we say that in this rational expression, the excluded value for x is 0, because if x is 0, that makes this whole thing undefined. All right. Now, what's the big problem with that? Well, if you go back to your basic division you learned in like second grade, 8 divided by 2 is 4. And you can check your work because then 2 times 4 should make 8, and it does. And you can rewrite another problem that says 8 divided by 4 should equal 2. You can mix these around and create true equations, all right? Over here, if you got 0 divided by 2, yeah, that works. You can have a 0 on top because if I take 2 times 0, I get 0. That works, all right? But... If you take this and you say 0 divided by 0 equals 2, no, not in any way. So when 0 is in the denominator, that's a problem, all right? And we try to avoid that by identifying what are called excluded values, all right? So this idea of, say, 8 divided by 0, if I say 8 divided by 0 equals something, then it should it should be true, then, that if I multiply both sides by zero, right, cancel out the zero, if you follow the normal rules of algebra, 
I can multiply both sides by zero, that cancels out the zero, leaves me eight, and so eight is equal to x times zero. Well, there's no value for x when you multiply it times zero, but you're gonna get eight. That's a problem. This doesn't make any sense to have eight divided by zero. It's totally undefined, all right? So you can't have something like that. So what we have here is the x cannot be zero, and we say that zero for this instant is what's called an excluded value because eight divided by zero, if we substitute zero in for x, gives us an undefined expression, all right? Now, what you'll be asked to do is to find excluded values. What value or values, and there can be more than one, would make the denominator equal to zero, which is what we do not want. And so basically all you have to do is what we call set the denominator equal to zero. So here's the denominator, x. If I set x equal to zero, I say x equals zero, and what do you know? If x is zero, five divided by zero is undefined, so we say x cannot equal zero, and that's the excluded value for this. Something like this, all right, you can't say if x is zero, then zero minus three is just minus three, and that works. It's perfectly fine to have two divided by minus three. So what we're gonna do is take this denominator and again, set it equal to zero. X minus three equals zero, because that'll tell us the value of X that makes the denominator zero. And so I add three to both sides and I see X equals three, which means that sure enough, if X is three, then three minus three equals zero and we've got a problem. So we say that the excluded value here is X cannot be equal to three. All right. Because if x was 3, then the denominator would equal to 0. But x could be pretty much anything else except for 3. You see that? Let's look at some others. 7 over x squared minus 4. All right. Well, if I set x squared minus 4 equal to 0, remember I'm trying to figure out what will make this 0, because that's what we don't want to have. So I get x squared minus 4 equals 0, add 4 to both sides, x squared equals 4, take the square root of both sides, x equals plus or minus 2, right? Now if you think about that, you go back here and you say if x is 2, then 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0, that's a problem. We don't want it to be 2. If x is minus 2, yeah, sure enough, minus 2 times minus 2 is once again 4, and 4 minus 4 is 0. So here we have two excluded values. x better not be plus 2 or minus 2. All right. Over here, we see 2x minus 8 as the denominator. So we set that equal to 0 to figure out what value of x is going to make that 0. And that value is what we don't want. That's the value we want to exclude. So I add 8 to both sides. 2x equals 8. x equals 4. And I looked 2 times 4 is 8. Minus 8 is 0. That's a problem. So we say that 4 is the excluded value. And you just write it with a do not equal sign. x does not equal 4. Because if it does, that's a real problem. All right? And finally, we look at something like this. We don't care about the numerator. That has nothing to do with it. The numerator can be zero. We've seen that already. It's the denominator that can't be zero here, all right? So here we set this equal to zero, x times three x minus six equals zero. And we see that there are two numbers, two things being multiplied, x and that's times this. So notice that here, x cannot be 0 because if x is 0, the whole thing becomes 0. It doesn't matter, right? But if the other thing becomes 0, that's a problem too. So we have to set 3x minus 6 equal to 0. 3x equals 6 divide by 3. x equals 2. Because when x is 2, 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. And then 0 times 2 is still 0, and that's a problem. So in this case x cannot be 0, and x cannot be 2, all right? 
This you should just be able to get by looking at. You go, well, if x is zero, boom, that wipes out everything, and so x can't be zero. But then there's another value you got to check for as well. All right. Um, yeah, can't make it any harder than that. So your last uh, lesson for this week is 116, and do problems A to I. Bye.